This is your boy King Daniax. Welcome to Lightroom 101. I've been requested to do a video like this. So this is one of those videos that you want to see if you are still new to the photography industry. This video will only be based on how to use Lightroom, not how to download it. If you don't know how to download it, there are other tutorials. You can just go up there and press search and search how to download Lightroom and how to install Lightroom. I'm just going to show you how to use Lightroom. The first step you have to take when you just got Lightroom is learn how to import your pictures. I'm going to show you how to import and how to export. The only way to import your image on Lightroom, there are actually three ways you can do that. You can just go to file and then you can go to import photos and videos. Just click here or you can just do a shortcut which is control shift and I which also it's gonna open something like this and then you can navigate around your computer and find the folder that you want to use on Lightroom and just select import another way to import you can just go to library and then minimize Lightroom and then go to the folder on your PC and just drag the folder and drop it here and then press import again when you're done it's gonna look like this and it's gonna show your folders on your right this tab deals with your folders and navigating of your portrait and how you want to view your pictures. It's also going to be responsible for the file or the files that you kept your project on. After you're done importing your pictures, then you can just press develop. When you press develop, you're going to see these three tabs, which is one, two, and then three below here. This one is your navigator. This one will help you to zoom your pictures. Now it's on feet. If you press fill, it's just going to zoom it like this. And then it's just going to keep on zooming your pictures like this. And then if you go back to fields, it's going to fit here. And you can also change the option here. Let's just bring it back here. And this one is responsible for your preset. You can also try Lightroom presets or you can also try your own presets. You can create your own preset by adjusting this other tab here, adjusting everything on this other tab here. And then you can just press here and then it's going to say create a preset. And then there is snapshot, not important, history, not important for me, collection, not that important. And then there's another tab below here. This tab is responsible for showing you all your pictures, all your pictures that you already exported. On the other side, it's just going to show you your display. This one represents the whole display of Lightroom. If you don't like how it's appearing, you can just click here, full screen. And with menu bar, or you can just press full screen without menu bar it's just gonna look like this or you can also go back and just press this or there's a shortcut which is Control alt and f and then this one is sort of like a navigator between library and develop library and develop if you want to go back to the, your folder and export another folder you can just click here it will lead you back to library and then you can come back here it's gonna take you back to develop and then below here this is your picture and then this is your reference view if you are using the latest one it's going to show you this but if you are using the old one it's going to show you this it's also your cycle between before and after views and then there's soft proofing which i never used before i only used the reference view and then there's a tab above here which also shows get started with Lightroom. I think it's connecting your Lightroom mobile with your Lightroom PC. But also here there is library which I already mentioned, but I never actually mentioned which which one we're gonna use the most. Library and develop are the most important part now when it comes to editing your pictures. Map, book, slideshow, print, and website is not important. If you are a beginner, but if you are used to Lightroom, maybe you might get creative with the things the other options here and then there's this tab this tab is the most important tab here yeah? and also another way to hide everything or especially the tabs you can just click the arrows here and then there's another arrow here and then there's another arrow on the bottom here it's just gonna give you much space but if you wanna like do a full screen view you can just go back to this option here and then just press full screen and then hide the tab here it's gonna view lightroom like this this is how we're gonna work from now and then from here let me go back here and then let me pick a picture if you want to select a picture and rate it you can just press your number key on your keyboard and uh, on the right side of your keyboard you can press 5 to rate it 5 2 to rate it 2 1 to rate it 1 and then there's 6 
for red, 7 for yellow, 8 and 9 for blue. These options will help you to pick which pictures are best for editing and which ones are you want to delete. It's just going to help you navigate around that. Now we're just going to move on to the other tab. I already picked the picture that I'm going to deal with, which is this picture right here. I already marked it 5. If you only want to see this picture that is rated 5 or you want to see all the pictures that you rated with stars, you can just come here to filter and just select the star. There's no filter. You can click here. You can click on the star or you can just come to rated like this. It's going, only going to show the pictures that you already rated. So we're just going to work on this picture now. And also, this red thing is showing here. It's actually showing me that this part of the image is overexposed. When you come to the tab here, this is the most important tab. The first thing you're going to see on top here is histogram. You can also hide histogram like this. You can also reveal it like this. And this part, as you can see, it shows this part. This part means there's something that is clipping. I already selected it here to show me the clipping whites and also this side to show me the clipping blacks. What are the clipping blacks, if you can ask me? The graph is represented by the blacks, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and blacks. If it's looking like this, this is probably exposed actually because you can you also have your blacks, you have your shadows, and you have your mid-tones showing here, and you have your highlights, and also you have your whites showing. But if your blacks have moved to the corner here, it says that your blacks are clipping. Same as your whites, if they move to the corner like this, it shows that they are clipping. Already it's moving, the graph is moving to the corner like this, it means my whites are clipping. Which whites? These whites are clipping here, which is the sunset on the picture. If I select this, this will show me which ones are clipping or not. I have to adjust to make sure this one doesn't move to the edge like this, but somewhere here. And also I have to adjust this one to make sure it shows me if the blacks are clipping. But since it's in the middle, it shows that they are blacks. Yes, they are blacks on the image, but they are not clipping. This side, they are white on the image, but they are clipping. So I'm supposed to adjust the white until I get this graph somewhere like right here, not to touch the edge. So we're just going to select here to get indicators whether you are clipping or not. But also you have to study the graph. Is your crop and then your heel brush or spot removal, your eye corrector, red eye correcting, and your grid and filter, and your radius filter and a brush here. And down here you have your profile style. In other cameras it's written as your profile picture control on Nikon. Uh, I think so is picture style. And then down here you have your white balance, which will also help you to correct your white balance, especially if you are shooting on an environment where it had different lightings. Outdoors, you can just select it and go to auto. It's going to adjust it auto. Or you can just press daylight if you are shooting daylight, cloudy, or shades and tungsten and also fluorescent and flash. But also here it gives you option to use it manually. I'm just going to go as, as short and then I'm just going to adjust my temperature. Your temperature has your blues and also your orange or yellow. This one is your blues and this one has your yellow. You can adjust those on your image. Now my picture is all red. But as you can see, when I'm adjusting this one, I'm adding yellow to my image. When I bring it this side, I'm adding blue, which will eliminate the yellows on my image. And I can just adjust it here and say, I like it like this. This is how I want to see it. And then your tint also based on your papers and also greens. Sometimes you'll take a picture and you'll see it has too much greens or too much paper. This is where you adjust your white balance to correct those errors. So I'm just going to adjust it like this, which it reduces red now. If I do this, it will bring back the skin tone to orange. Skin tone has more orange, more reds than any other colors out there. So from here, down here, we have your tones. Your tones here, this will consist of contrast, exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Let's just come to this one. We are, we are also editing while I'm telling you what each slider does. I'm showing you also how to edit. Your exposure will actually help you to brighten your image or to darken your image. When you come here and just adjust here, it's going to introduce more light to your image. 
and as when you bring it down here it's gonna introduce more tags on your image as you can see also on the histogram above here just watch the histogram when i do this it shows that most of the colors are clipping your purple your blues and so on are clipping if i bring it like this it's also showing me that my blacks are clipping on all of the colors but i still have the midtones a bit which is here and here and here and the reds let's just adjust it and put where it suits our eyes and then there's contrast below here contrast works on the saturations of the blacks and white when you adjust this side it will affect the saturation of the blacks and white in every color that is in the image but usually it affects the blacks and white when you also adjust it like this it's gonna add more saturation to those colors and more and other colors on the scene as you can see now it's happening you might like this kind of a style but you still have to do more here because you have saturation below yeah let's just put it back right here and just adjust it a bit like this and then you have your highlights this slider only affects your highlights it will affect this area but if you move it too far it will also affect other parts of the image that has highlights if I adjust it this side, it's going to bring the highlights to the white. If I adjust it this side, it's going to bring the highlights also to the mid-tones. So you're just going to play around with this one. But if your picture is proper highlights and it's not clipping, you can just leave it there. But if you, like my picture, you can see the whites are clipping here. If I do a bit like this, it's just going to bring down the whites here which already eliminates the red here that shows that it, my picture is clipping and then after the highlights you come to your shadows the shadows will affect your blacks in your image and this is sort of like an exposure but only for the blacks as you can see if i bring it down here everything that is dark it will go in the shadows if i adjust it a bit here it's just gonna lighten the shadows as you can see now the shadows are exposed it's gonna introduce more lights to the shadows main tones and also the highlights so just gonna bring it down here but i only want to expose the shadows not too much but just a bit something like this on 43 and then you come down here on your whites and blacks this one will work as the exposure of your whites and this one will work as your exposure for your blacks you can under expose or over expose your blacks you can also do the same here under expose your white and also over expose your white this will only affect the whites and this one will only affect the blacks on your image if any color on your image like red it has blacks here it will be affected if you adjust the black something like this and also on your white if any color has whites like the skin here it will be affected if you do this also the sun will be exposed because it also has whites on the yellows so it, it, i'm just gonna adjust it like this and just leave it there and just bring down the blacks not too much i'm just gonna bring the blacks a bit up here this is how i like my picture clarity works like saturation but more of on the details if you can just click here and just look at what's gonna happen if i adjust the clarity here if I do this, I add more saturation and also more focus on my image. If I do this, I remove saturation and also make my skin a bit blurry. So clarity will also give you that Instagram style. Usually when you want to make your picture pop, you can just bring it up like this. It's going to give you the 3D feeling of your picture. And also if you want to make your skin smooth, you can just bring it down here. Usually I bring it around minus 11 to help me make my skin smooth. And then dehaze, dehaze will dehaze your picture. If your picture is haze, something like this, as you can see here, it's a bit haze because of the sun, which is reflecting on the on the lens. If I do this, it's gonna add haze. If I adjust it this side, it's gonna remove all the haze. Because you can see that my blacks had haze on it, but also it's gonna affect the saturation of the image. As you can see, the reds now are more. As you can see on the highlights the reds are popping up and then you come to vibrant vibrance it's like saturation but vibrant it's more of a micro it does micros 
adjustment as you can see if i do this it's gonna desaturate but as you can see even if it desaturate but you can still see the colors that are popping up and then if you can do this you will add more saturation so most of the time i i prefer using vibrant more than i like using saturation saturation will just bring you to black and white or just over saturate when i'm editing i usually bring down the saturation to minus 15 and then i will use my vibrance to add more saturation something like this as you can see this is how our portrait looks now with all the adjustment that we did this was before and then this is our after now so we are done with bases and then we go we go to tone curves tone curves i can, I, I don't know how to describe tone curves tone curves works globally like everything we've done here tone curves can do but on a global level as you can see it has my highlights lights darks and shadows which are also represented here which also shows on your curve here you can just adjust the curve to adjust a certain level of your portrait let's just click here sometimes you might see it like this which you can also do just adjust here to add more saturation and also darken the blacks and then you can come here and do an S curve to lighten most of the image and also highlights bring up the highlights you can also bring up the, the mid tones but if you bring up the mid tones as you can see the colors are becoming desaturated but if you bring down the mid tones the colors will be more saturated as you can see so let's just take this back from your tone curve you can just hide here and just select here you have your hsl or color here you're gonna adjust the hue of any color that shows on your image here you're gonna adjust your hue of your red orange yellow green aqua blue purple and magenta you can also adjust the saturation you can also adjust the luminance luminance which is the exposure of those colors if i can play around with this one if i can bring it up it's going to affect the red exposure it's, it's just going to desaturate or or overexpose the red as you can see here on the highlights the red is being affected it's adding more highlights to the red which will end up bringing it to the whites somewhere here if i can put it back here something like this let's just adjust it a bit and then you come to your saturation you can also adjust the saturation of your reds if you want more red you can do this if you want less red you can also do this but i prefer less red and also your orange your orange will adjust your skin tone actually your reds and orange are gonna affect your skin tone if you do this it will desaturate your skin tone and other orange objects in the image but if you also do this, you're just going to add more orange on your skin tone and other objects that are orange on your picture. Same here, you're going to adjust the hue. If you don't like how the red is looking, you can adjust it and turn it into purple. Or you can also adjust it and turn it into orange. So let's, let's just put it here. Same here, there's a blue here. I want to change this blue. I don't like how the blue is looking. I'm just going to adjust the blue here. Or I can just bring it somewhere like there until it looks gray and then i can also i've also noticed there's a bit of aqua on the blue you can also do this and just do this a bit as you can see you can adjust anything i just want to i'm just trying to make this gray so i'm just gonna bring down the blues a bit something like this now it's gray and also here it's gray because there was a bit of a blue when you're adjusting the temperature above here it's gonna also affect the colors how they look so you're supposed to come back here and adjust them to how they actually looked on your shot split tone i don't usually use split tone and then there's detail detail is important because it, it offers you noise reduction to remove noise and also sharpness but usually when you take a picture already your sharpness is adjusted on your camera let me show you how to reduce noise as you can see there is noise here if i do this a bit most of the noise it was removed by the clarity but i'm just gonna use this one a bit just put it around 25 the the, the sharpness is already there i'm just i'm not gonna add more sharpness 
you can also play around with here with the contrast of the noise and also the detail of the noise and so on and also this other option here colors and so on but i usually just adjust here without even playing around with anything here you can go to lens correction this will con will correct your lens especially your lens when you are using a wide lens zoom lens portrait lens usually there is a sort of like vignetting on the corners or sometimes there's a band you can just press here it will eliminate the band here you won't notice but it's just minimum adjustment it will detect what kind of a camera you were using what kind of a lens you were using if you shot your picture raw and also press here as you can see it removed the vignetting on the corner it also tells me i was using the sony ef 51.8 so on i was actually using a sony not a nikon here sorry guys so we're done here also transform i don't use transform i only use effect effects is to add your own vignetting not the vignetting added by the lens when you drag it this side it's gonna give you white when you drag it this side it's gonna give you dark and also you can adjust how you want your vignette to look by adjusting the midpoint here you can make it closer or you can just make it wider and then your roundness you want it to be too round or just less round and also the feather if you want too much feather or you just want to do something like this and then you can also adjust it to change the color if you want it to be black you can only change it into black or white something like this and from here you can just do this and then from here done you have vignetting already so I can say we are done as I was showing you how to use Lightroom I was also showing you how to edit and what does each slider actually do when you adjust it to left or right so thank you guys leave more questions if there's something that is challenging you on lightroom i'm gonna show you how to also how to export i forgot to say that how to export on your lightroom this is your picture we are done first we started like this and then we ended up looking like this okay now you like what you've done you want to export your picture there are also two options to export actually there are three you can just click here right click here and then go to export then this export here you can also press sorry you can press Control shift and e which is gonna bring you to this option export option as so my graphic card is interfering it's gonna bring you to this option and then there's another option you can just go let's bring it back to full screen here you can just go to file and then go to export and then when you go to export usually it will look like this if it's the first time you're using lightroom it will look like this and then you just have to press here and then press specific folder and then go and choose the folder that you want to export your pictures to and then name the folder that you want to be created inside for the kind of pictures you are exporting if you are doing wedding press you can type wedding if you're doing wedding you can type wedding portrait you can type portrait so on if it's an event you can type the kind of event you're busy with so inside the folder that you picked already here there it's gonna create other folders something like that here you don't have to select anything the other things that you should be careful of make sure it says jpeg we export in jpeg make, make sure it says jpeg or original so it says jpeg and then you this is this is where you adjust your quality if you want your picture to be bigger full full quality you can adjust it if you want it to post it on social media play between 80 and 70 percent and then your color space if you are exporting for social media press srgp these options will show you different colors when you don't have a, you are not using a very high quality monitor but also when you're using your cell phone it's going to show you different colors but if you are you want to upload on your social media press srgp and then ignore the other things here and then just press export I already exported this picture you can just do this and then it's going to show you if it's exporting up here exporting one file and then guys we are done please subscribe leave more questions i'm going to do a tutorial i'm going to 
show you how to actually solve each problems we're facing here we work together here we help each other improve king the signing out